and welcome back episode nine of the iron wheel collective podcast john and i are here in the studio moist scooping some brown pre-workout and we're ready to bring you some valuable information today how are you doing john doing fantastic i've been working out upper lower this week oh you've been working out you started working out you know i'm, I'm giving it a try giving you're it a looking try. really good well thanks that's what my mom said <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i i found it creepy just like right now but i'll take it as a compliment why would you find that creepy your mom literally like you came out of her it would be creepy and appalling and insensitive if she were to think anything less because there's that saying you know you got a face only your mom would find beautiful or something <laughs> that's that's just plain not true for you but i uh, i digress they call it a face made for the radio too the, and we're podcasting <laughs> that's that's why we're here Woo. and that's why we don't make videos for these not really not that we are just um I hide amateur editors but yeah john doesn't even have a face he looks like that guy, the headless horseman. I <laughs> just wear a bag. <laughs> like it makes more sense at this point. <laughs> I tell people don't ask. I mean, it's cool. It's don't cool. ask, don't tell. There you go. Well, so, how are you? Uh, I am doing very well today. Um, every Thursday, we've been doing Murph practice at the gym, which is absolutely brutal. And in case you out in the audience don't know, because I didn't know what a Murph was up until a few weeks ago either. But it is a exercise that was, or a uh, a full workout rather, mm-hmm. developed by a um, I believe he was in the army, in the Navy Seal. Na- Navy Seal, okay, yeah. okay, Navy Seal by a Navy Seal, a uh, a man who actually sacrificed himself for the greater cause of the country and his fellow soldiers. He used to do this workout on the base wearing a weighted vest and it goes as such those guys go hard man they do i believe it is um 200 push-ups 300 squats 100 pull-ups and a two mile run so it is it is quite the quite the session yeah that that's uh that'll blast your abs as the kids say that that'll tone your thighs really um but if uh, interestingly enough, I just learned the, the story about the actual guy who created that Murph himself today and after my workout. But I thought knowing that before the workout might have made it a little bit easier, knowing that this is a workout a guy did not only very often as his main source of exercise or as a main source of exercise, but he also had the nuts to sacrifice himself and for the boys, for the country. And I just found that found that inspiring, you know, to be like, all right, if this guy can go out and literally like die, I can put myself through an hour of of intense exercise and I don't know, feel a little bit feel a little bit less sadistic about it. I think that the Navy SEALs carry this uh like really motivating energy about them. Like, David Goggins. Yeah, David Goggins comes to mind. Jocko Willink is the other really popular Navy SEAL. Chris Kyle. I mean, they they have all like come out to tell the tale. Some of well, not all of them. And some of them have come out to tell the tale, and they they speak about like this crazy shit that they do. These workouts that they put themselves through willingly, with the intent of like making their minds strong as well as their body i mean at that point their body has been through so much that they have adapted to that style of exercise well i bet if you're a navy seal your mind may have been through some shit too yeah and you'll need a tough one a tough mind so it makes sense i so is this a workout that this is the one they do on memorial day right yes is memorial day gonna be on a thursday no, but we're doing it anyway. So that that's the, what we're we're essentially practicing for it. So we're doing portions of it each week. Nice. Until Memorial Day. So we've got quite a bit of time to practice. So I actually really like that we have started this early even though it's like it's really tough. When's Memorial uh, Day? I think it's in May. Ah, uh, okay. Um I always forget. Yeah, I believe it's in May. Um but 
yeah, I'm glad that we're getting the time to practice this because if you were to try this just raw, no practice at all, it's like running to, a marathon, it but would worse. take you quite a while. It's like and doing a marathon of push ups and squats and then running a marathon. <laughs> It, it would be doable, but it would probably take you a long time. And, and what I'm yeah. trying to do now is to make it, hopefully I can do it within an hour. That's Dude, what I'm trying to shoot for. I would be willing to, vo- I, I volunteer right now to do a Murph with you at some point in time. Well, you call the day. Yeah, well, let's do it. That would be, that would be quite the challenge. Uh, I would highly recommend starting to do some pull-ups and some push-ups <laughs> and surprisingly even the right. uh, the air squats are they really get to you because if you are wanting to do this in say 10 sets that's three rep sets on the squat wow. even if it's an air squat that is going to that is going to be taxing they add up it, yeah. the fatigue is definitely accumulative and that i can imagine that you're going to have this crazy amount of lactic acid buildup going on well just burn. It, You're going to burn. It burns, and more so, for me at this point, at least, it's been uh, quite difficult cardiovascular-wise. Oh, like, I am, like... I'm sure I'm that mile helps. Cooking, yeah. <laughs> um, the, so, how we have been doing it when we have done, like, the, uh, the full two miles was, like, a mile to begin and a mile to finish. So, then you do your workout in between. And I've been for the past couple weeks practicing with a weighted vest to do it because apparently that's how, uh, that's how you would do it. If you are pretty proficient with Mm. your, I would say at pull-ups, because if you can do pull-ups in a uh, proficient manner, chances are you're hitting push-ups and squats pretty decently as well. So I think pull-ups would really be a deciding factor, but Oh my God, it's so freaking hard and running with a weighted vest. (laughs) <laughs> man keeps you nice and warm it keeps you warm like i can't um i can't swing my arms because the be- the vest bounces on you so i kind of have to hold it like a backpack and man i run so slow with that <laughs> thing on but i'm trying to get better <laughs> i've seen guys like try try to ruck up to mamak i don't know how much oh like that guy who who rucks up with his 50 pound oh, yeah. dumbbells just like <laughs> chilling on his shoulders the dumbbell guy he's all shirtless at least red. farmer carry him up. I think he does, but when his grip gives out, he he just rests them on his shoulders, which is kind yeah, of yeah. You can't kick him, cool. can't yeah. roll him. I mean, you could, you could but try. That would suck. Yeah, that'd be a good workout too. But all right, all right. So what's up today? What are we here to talk about? So we fly by the seat of our pants here, and we our main goal is to bring pertinent inf- information to the listeners. So today we wanted to talk a bit about how to create a sustainable long-term diet plan for yourself. So John, first thing that I want to establish is that short-term dieting can serve a purpose, but I believe it is important that the contents of that diet, the quality of food should remain the same. The only thing that should change if you're trying to either gain weight or lose weight is your calories, so the amount of that food. I believe that a sustainable diet should consist of a selection of foods that are nutritious and that you don't mind eating every week. Which actually isn't that hard to do when you really give it a shot and but but it is. It t- I don't know about you, but when I first started paying attention to nutrition, I was only about the calories. Mm. I had it completely backwards. And it took a while for me to really learn. And not to mention nutrition as a subject and the science behind it as a whole is is not uh not finger painting. That's that's very true. It's pretty dense at times. Um as you were as you were talking just now, I had an idea that I think a lot of a lot of the time diets are kind of seen as something that's supposed to be hard, something that's supposed to be difficult. So would you say that or would you agree that unless you're somebody who's looked into nutrition and who's kind of 
combed through the subject, at least in like a really mild sense, and has gained a pretty basic understanding of nutrition, then maybe you have this idea that dieting and eating to look better, because that's a lot of people's goals, usually based off of aesthetics or some weight loss goal for the most part. Or to try to prevent the worsening or onset of a disease. Do you think that there are people out there with the idea that it's supposed to be difficult? Well, I mean, I just said that it was difficult, and I think that just because it's difficult doesn't mean that you can't do it. It's not impossible. And usually things worth doing aren't going to be easy. So that's something that you should hopefully come to terms with because chances are to this point in your life, you have endured a struggle in some way, shape, or form that has resulted in you growing as a person. And in this case, this might result in you shrinking as a person. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I see what you did there. <laughs> well, I agree. It's super good to acknowledge that change is inevitably difficult. It's something that that will never change. So going into it, knowing that at first it'll be pretty challenging, I think it's also good to accept that eventually you can create habits that are actually pretty sustainable and almost just keep themselves going just based off of, you know, how you've learned about yourself. You can consistently do these things that you know are going to work. They're, they're in line with your goals and with what you're trying to do health wise. And it doesn't feel like a struggle anymore. I fully agree with you on that. Um, that is kind of the point where I have personally got it to in my life. And I'm really, really, really pleased with the quality of that honestly compared to what I was doing before when I didn't care about nutrition and I would eat whatever compared to what I'm eating now and even compared to what a lot of people like my dad um sometimes he and I talk about like our dinners and stuff like that what we've been making and I tell him and he tells me that I eat like a king and he's <laughs> right he's really right um but it's super simple stuff it's basic as can be, and it tastes amazing, and it's not that hard to cook. So that is the trifecta of qualities in my diet personally that make it sustainable for me to where I week in and week out, like I'm not, I have no urges to go over to Mod Pizza and grab some some fast food like that like i can make better stuff at home if i'm gonna go out to eat in fact it's it's got to be something that i can't easily make at home yeah and is like a treat like yeah. like when we went to the uh the pit barbecue place oh yeah man some smoke like 24 hour smoked brisket you just can't do that at home. yeah and that's not you know the most nutritious protein or uh main event for your meal either so that's not something that i would typically be having day to day but that's where eating out comes in for me is just like the only time it's and it doesn't it's not even like cheating either i wouldn't right. consider it cheating i would just consider it because i'm still it's not like i'm gonna go and like i don't know what would be the uh closest to cheating that because i eat a whole cake it's yeah. not like i'm gonna eat a whole cake i think that might be cheating and that's really when you say cheating as far as a cheat meal, I think you're just cheating yourself. Yeah. I don't think you're cheating any system or anything. You're just cheating yourself. Like, how about you start cooking foods or you start finding nutritious foods that you enjoy eating that is something that you can consistently make day to day, week to week, that is uh, flexible. You know, like some days, for instance, we don't have a fresh veggie ready, but we always stock the freezer with uh, frozen steamable vegetables. Mm -hmm. So like, bam, throw one of those and you got your veggies. So yeah. no, no excuses yeah. and they still taste great. Yeah, definitely. With almost, well, pretty minimal work too. All you have to do is press a couple buttons on the microwave and then <laughs> cut the, ba the bag to open it. Some of the bag even has a little perforation. Wow. 
Wow, they mm. they do it all except for microwave. Yeah, they serve it up on a plate. Well, so what I think happens for a lot of people is that initially, in in them acquiring this knowledge, this nutritional knowledge, what they think of as you know like hitting their trifecta, which was taste, budget, right? I'm trying to remember that taste. For my budget. trifecta, yeah, yeah, yeah. my trifecta was, yeah, basically enjoyability. If you like uh-huh. what you're eating, okay. if you can, if it's convenient enough to make like every day, like it doesn't take you like six hours to make these meals. Yeah, like you could throw so it together con- in half an hour. Or so yeah. convenience, and uh, I think the other one was the quality of food. We'll have to we'll have to go back and remember because I just invented this trifecta. <laughs> as we go. Remember, Iron Wool Collective, Seed of the Pants. That's how we do it, but. Yeah. Um, while while these uh, these three pillars may not be set in stone, it's the same general thing. So like right. you need to cater to your enjoyment. They're standards. If, if you don't like the food, then what, who the heck is going to keep eating yeah. it? If it takes you super long time to make this food, and that is not convenient around your your schedule, you're not going to keep doing it. And if the food is not nutritious, or not as nutritious as it could be you're uh you're missing something there because mm-hmm. even if you're like if eating homemade pizza every day or something like that there's still a lot left to be desired as far as uh nutrients to your body so i want to make a shout out to those who do not know what they do not know about nutrition because for a lot of people they're perfectly fine with saying carl's jr hits all three of those points it's convenient it tastes great and they're totally fine with the quality because they don't know that the quality is not good that it actually does not serve very many health goals that it's more a detriment than anything else convenience it probably definitely takes or it definitely takes the cake in Um, affordability that's you know depending on your situation i think again that is another pitfall of eating at restaurants or fast food is that you can you can get better bang for your buck making your own food absolutely in most cases and i'd say unless you're hitting that dollar menu but then you're really slacking on the nutrition portion of it so these are just trade-offs if if you go out to eat some fast food let's say you're going to be checking off the the convenience factor. You're going to be checking off the taste factor because it tastes like it's made to be highly palatable. It's made to be eaten in copious amounts. And the one thing it's not going to check off is the quality standard. So it falls falls pretty low on that spectrum. Whereas if you were to cook at home, the convenience may be less. It's something that may take an initial adjustment. So actually scheduling it into your day knowing when you're going to start making dinner pro tip get a girlfriend who can cook (laughs) yeah and loves cooking too Mm -hmm. make some great food but for some people it's it's not going to be very convenient at first but just know it can be done and it is very much worth it because in everything that cooking from home may be lacking from your perspective at this moment you have it all to gain in quality which is going to translate to far more enjoyment just in life in general you know uh there there's an old saying that again my dad used to say and he's like you know you're in trouble when you start liking your own cooking (laughs) (laughs) but for real for real um that is uh the skill of knowing how to cook as well taking the time which is not not a heck of a lot of time and you do it gradually meal by meal you improve that skill because you're gonna have to eat either way you might as well keep practicing and again it doesn't have to be complicated guy fieri freaking (laughs) uh food network chef stuff right like you just need to make stuff that is nutritious affordable um and the trick is making it taste good and that's what a lot of people who are in the habit of uh opting for those highly palatable highly convenient foods uh, at the expense of nutrition, that's something that they may see as a a trade off because won't taste like yeah good. this uh, or another trade off on top of having learned to cook that is yeah. but you can make the stuff taste good. All you have to do is practice and mess w- with with spices and ingredients, and then 
sooner or later you'll find something that is just like, wow, I could eat Slaps. this every single day. Yeah, it's Spanx. <laughs> Yeah, you could you can find something like that, and you everybody who's listening to this, you have the potential to be your own chef and be a good one at that without having to go to culinary school with a relatively small amount of effort. Yeah, definitely. I mean, both of us are living examples of that. We both had to learn how to cook, and I fell victim to this. <laughs> It was my understanding that getting healthy meant I had to eat chicken and brown rice all the time with a side of steamed broccoli. Yeah, please. We're going to save everybody (laughs) the trouble because I've been there too. And that's, see, that for... That's depressing, man. You don't have your trifecta or or quadfecta, including uh, affordability. You don't really have that going there because the taste is not there. A lot of people will, and I have been a victim of this in my past. I have been like, food is fuel. Yeah, I don't oh, care definitely. what it tastes like. <laughs> yeah. I don't care what it tastes like. I'm just going to eat it if it's got the nutrients I yeah. need. But that's not sustainable. No. Um, you you must respect your, your palate to a degree. Like, while you're not going... I personally don't think it is worth it to make the trade-off on nutrition for the palate, mm-hmm. but I do think that it is important that you spend a little bit of time and messing with some cooking strategies and some ingredients to find what is going to be enjoyable for you because that's huge. Like I, I love like I, I look forward to dinner every night. I look forward to the leftovers of that dinner the next day. Yeah, and. Whether I made it or Jesslyn made it, she makes some fancy stuff sometimes. But, um, yeah, it's just uh, I don't want to eat out. I don't want to eat junk food. I don't want chips. I don't want any of that. Like, I just want my my homemade food because I know what's in it. I know it's Trish's. Totally new. Trish's? Yep, Trish's? It's oh, Trish's. I like that. It's, t- it's so Trish's. <laughs> That's Trish's. Right well, yeah, there. I was going to say it's nut, but <laughs> I, I, th- I thought I'd go with the other. <laughs> Dude, yeah, perfect. I mean, nut works, too. <laughs> Hopefully the uh, the FCC won't censor that one out. Yeah, it's like if if I if you've ever heard me say it tastes like nut, that is just a <laughs> short slang for it tastes like nutrition. Yeah. And I, I thought Trishin would be better for the radio. <laughs> Trishin, or, everybody. Or a, the internet, rather. <laughs> Get some Trishin. Yep. Well, okay. I want to make a point here on... Oh, shoot. I forgot what I was going to say. Well, that's okay, because I've got plenty to say here. All right. And, I, Let's and go. I'll, uh, I'll get you started here. Yeah. So, as a first step toward improving someone's diet and with sustainability in mind Mm -hmm. what would be a good recommendation like while keep in mind there is no first step there's no book on this Mm -hmm. there's no one size fits all just like everything else you're gonna have to try some stuff but what would be a safe and quickly effective way to begin a a shift into a more nutrient and health conscious diet so okay for sustainability i will i'll answer this from the perspective of what i would do if i were starting and if i you know this is obviously in hindsight because this is not what i did no, i had to learn the do hard what way. you did chicken and rice <laughs> yeah and moist pre-workout dude i i ate chicken that was sour smelling like on so many occasions i remember we were moving into our house one time alina and i and so we were between houses and like the cooking situation was bad but i was all about that meal prep life bro i had my tupperware my chicken my brown rice and so i, I had them all in one container it was a. Uh, First of all, I'd buy chicken by the ass load, like so much chicken, because I would just cook all of it and then have have it on hand, because I went through it like pretty quickly. I was eating a lot of it, and um, I had this chicken that we got from the the store, and it already smelled kind of bad. It was very questionable. It also, bad before you cooked it. Yeah, so oh, no. it was it was a little questionable because. Uh, I think it had spent some time sitting outside from the fridge and not to mention it was also getting really close or maybe it had just passed its sell-by date. And so we thought, well, we have to cook it because it was the only thing we had to eat. And I think at that point we were pretty broke too. So we weren't like, ah, let's go eat out. 
So it was it was checking some boxes off of our trifecta right there. It was the most convenient thing. It was very affordable. It just really failed on that last one, man. It smelled so bad, but like not well, not but bad was, enough. Um, it was borderline nutritious, nutritious if it wasn't fully rancid. So maybe you got three out of the four. Yeah, yeah. It just tastes like there you go. death. Maybe. I think it was on the edge. Like I couldn't remember if I had cooked it with hot sauce or not. So that's that was like my partial explanation for the vinegar smell, because that's the best way I can describe it. But it was also in the same large Tupperware with all this brown rice I had cooked, which back then was just brown minute rice because that was the fastest thing to make. If you've never had brown minute rice, you're talking about the one in the bag, right? No, the, the, this was the, bag. it comes oh, in a box okay. and uh, it's like it's parboiled, whatever that means. Yeah, I, that one's like not that bad. Basically. So you just microwave it and it's very quick. You know, so I cook like a large amount of it. The bag makes the other one taste weird, I gotta say. Really? Kind of plasticky. Yeah. Which, I like it, though. That was a trade-off I accepted, because <laughs> back then, my way of thinking was like, yeah, this is supposed to be difficult. Like, I'm I'm grinding it out. This is what it is. <laughs> I, I took pride in it, and so that's why we ate the chicken. We ate it, and both of us were like, this does not taste right, but we kept going. Did you get sick? No, we were fine. Well, yeah, I we guess fine. all's well that ends well. Yeah. Well, like, I have to eat some <laughs> disgusting, rotten chicken, but did something for your uh, your immune system, maybe. The really secret, kept it on its toes. Well, I think the secret was just more hot sauce. Like, it masked everything. See, I don't really like hot sauce, so I, I don't think I could make that happen. Well, you know. Hot too vinegary. I, too, it's already stinky. Yeah, you're just point, making, you're covering stink with stink. <laughs> It worked, fight fire with fire. But <laughs> at, at this point, in all honesty, like I am sick of chicken breast. I can't do it if it's not like thoroughly transformed. Like it has to be, it has to have flavor other than just chicken. Because I, I've done a lot of just salt and pepper chicken. Admittedly, there was a lot, also a lot of plain chicken, just normal. Because I was, how I was did you dumb. cook it? How did you cook it? Stove just, top or uh, oven? Spray, spray olive oil onto a skillet and cook it that way i chop it up so it could cook faster this was uh if it was frozen chicken i'd like wait until it defrosted enough and chop it up in the pan and so uh it usually came out kind of dry oftentimes the seasonings were skipped or i'd throw in some paprika salt pepper and that's just about it but sauce was king i gotta say though that you can cook chicken breast on its own without, like, excessive seasoning or extra ingredients and make it taste good. It's yeah. called grilling. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, I was just about to say. Dude, that's a game changer, big time. Like, it, it really, really transforms chicken. So I can eat it when it's been grilled, but I'm not a big fan of, like, oven baked or, or a skillet. Yeah, unless, unless it's, like, special, like skillet. Yeah. Skillet, I think if you cook it right with proper searing, and um, I like to like punch my chicken before I cook it to make <laughs> yeah. sure it's all like the same width. Beat that the that crap way, out it, of it. it doesn't dry out. As long if you can keep it from drying out, basically, and all you got is salt and pepper. Yeah. Preferably add some garlic to that, and then it'll be amazing. Right. I, I bet like a food thermometer would come in handy. You need a th food thermometer. <laughs> you need one. <laughs> All right. I've been telling you. Check out our Amazon affiliate links. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we use the rectal food thermometer. <laughs> right in the chicken's breath. <laughs> so, I mean, I I can do chicken, but it, it's a little bit of a scar on you know like on my consciousness right now. So is like the combination of ground turkey and brown rice. Yeah, I remember you ate a lot of that. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I, It's because I loved it. Back then, it was my favorite thing to eat. So it's straight I up gruel dog loved food. It. But that's, dude, I, when it's novel, it's not that bad. Right. But once you beat the crap out of it and you're just eating it every single day, every single week, that's not that's when things die to your palate. That's, that's, that's not... Not sustainable. No. That's when you feel like your soul dies a little bit. You just, it, it's not fun. And I think honestly, like it causes a big rebound too. It kind of, it has a tendency to 
push people to the edge of what they're willing to tolerate nutritionally, like ground turkey and brown rice all the time, very plain, or like chicken breast with broccoli, so plain, so that it causes you to crave like this decadent, exorbitant stuff. Like, man, I remember one time Alina and I went and we were having a cheat meal. So cheat yourself meal yeah okay this was back when we were doing the uh, group fitness challenge i mentioned a few episodes back and uh they they had provided us with a meal plan that was like exactly what i was just talking about it was chicken brown rice it was broccoli it was unlimited leafy greens but just a small amount of lean proteins and a small selection of complex carb sources both starchy and non-starchy and um so this this diet had us like in a pretty pretty significant calorie deficit at least from what we were previously eating which wasn't all that bad it was just a lot of like fast food so the quality was was bad we tried to make health conscious decisions when we did go out we just found that that wasn't sustainable either more from a budget point of view so we decided to start cooking our own meals and we did it was really plain stuff though we hated it after a while and we ended up going to have a cheat meal with Brenda and Miguel hi guys <laughs> and uh, it was at this place called straw dogs or stray dogs or something the restaurants closed now but they had these epic epic bowls of french fries so we ordered like this bowl of ranch fries this gigantic burger that like isn't made to fit inside anybody's mouth in one bite like it was just massive and the cr- the freaking piece de resistance was the dessert we each got milkshakes that had literally a whole donut sticking out of the top covered in cereal whipped cream homemade ice cream it was incredible so i got one and i think mine had like churros sticking out of it God. like full-on churros sounds so good and i remember i i devoured like i inhaled all of that and it was such a big deal in my head because i was committed to this diet like this bodybuilding diet i was i was sold bought and sold and i felt like i was betraying my health but i had to in order to keep myself from going crazy and it felt so good and so looking back now i can see like the mistakes i had made were uh trying to sustain a diet that was inherently unsustainable, at least for, for my lifestyle. Like if you're someone who gets off on, on all those plain, like truly plain foods, then my hat's off to you. You're Spartan, you're freaking a badass, but I can't, I couldn't do it. I needed something that was a lot more palatable or not even a lot, just a little bit more palatable. Well, I think that brings us to the, the point of how to thoughtfully practice moderation when it comes to eating less nutritious foods yeah like try not to look at foods as good or bad Mm -hmm. just look at them as more nutritious or less nutritious so the more nutritious foods are going to want to comprise a large percentage of your diet so i think like a a b grade like 80 percent and up would be putting you in a fantastic place yeah and then guess what that other 20 percent can be it can be your your churro donut milkshake. Yeah. But the thing is, it's hard to keep it just that because that stuff, you have bad habits. Highly palatable food like that is legitimately addicting too. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, this, the science shows, right? Like mm-hmm. the dopamine reward center of the brain is just on fire whenever we do, like the, when we have these cheap meals or foods. Yeah, you bust with every bite. Yeah, dude, every bite. <sighs> Sometimes twice with another <laughs> bite. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, to kind of backtrack to that question from earlier and where I would start in terms of creating a sustainable diet would be understanding what to eat more of and what to eat less of. But beyond that, why? So that really, I think, is the first step. Why would you even want to eat these things that you cook at home that meet a certain health standard that you have set in your life? What's the whole point of it? If you don't understand why you're doing it, it's never going to sustain itself. I didn't know why I was eating that way other than the fact that 
that's what everyone told me I needed to do if I wanted to look like a beast. And knowledge is power, but I'm sure as it happened for you, as it happened for me, um, it was a gradual, a very slow, gradual building of knowledge. So if you're, if you have fitness related goals, then chances are you have started to learn a little bit about nutrition. Maybe are, I mean, you don't even have to be having fitness goals to know what, a, what calories essentially represent. Um, but you might be slowly scratching deeper at that surface and maybe looking at macros and understanding the the composition of a meal whereas you have like you know a simply put a protein source a one or two carbohydrate sources Mm -hmm. and then fat within that meal and then that is i feel like one of the common starting places and you really don't have to go much deeper than that i would say learn why these are essential and that's about it you don't have to go and learn like anatomy or anything like that just just like if you can like john said a second ago if you can just put some some reason behind the actions that you're doing yeah and if it's logical and it makes sense to you then that will definitely help just understand that all food is more than just calories it's more than just you know your your snack for for the day or whatever it's information all food is information and that's that's a quote that i've been hearing a lot recently i'd love to hear what information was behind the churro donut milkshake like what is this (laughs) this guy's gonna die soon is that the information yeah (laughs) the beatus Oh my the god. Beatus. Imagine eating multiple of those per week, like even two. Yeah. Oh my god. Some people out those there are probably do it like, daily. Those are probably like and have a big gulp. How many calories do you think those like between one to two thousand, I would say? Oh, I would I would be willing to say that it is well over two thousand, maybe like at least two two thousand five hundred calories. Oh, is my, my guesstimation. It was, it was pretty dense, big, dude. Big milkshake. It was. It was huge. <laughs> and they were expensive. They were like like $10, I think. Wow, you really dollars. you blew the budget big time with that meal. Yeah. Full three-course meal. It, it, it felt so worth it in the moment because I was so deprived. But see, that's now you can have Now you can have a, a Ben & Jerry's every couple weeks. Yeah. And or even a, a little, like, you don't even need to eat a whole one. You could just have a little bit throughout the week and not overdo it with those highly palatable, mm-hmm. lesser nutritious foods. So going back, like, food is information in the way that when you eat something, it causes a reaction inside of your body, a physiological, bio- biological response. So... The things that you eat, the different macronutrients that you eat, tell your body to release certain hormones and to initiate certain processes or stop processes, and it's very complex. So without going too in-depth, understanding that all food is information, certain foods will tell your body to signal things that are a benefit to your health, while other things may send signals that are more detrimental to your health in the long run. For example, when you take in a lot of protein and you are exercising and exerting yourself quite often, that will create a signal to build muscle. It's an anabolic signal, whereas... An anabolic window. Yeah. The most important window in my house. (laughs) I got one too, man. (laughs) Yeah, but when we get our groceries, we just open that window and put them all through. We can't take them through the door. Yeah, you just have to make sure it's the right time. (laughs) Timing is everything. Exactly. (laughs) So, now, um, another example would be like a dozen donuts. That's obviously going to... I mean, you don't have to be a scientist to understand eating a dozen donuts will tell your body to gain something be like wow (laughs) we do not need this much energy right now we must be preparing for hibernation yep little did you know humans hibernate they did ever since 2017 whoa yep i i haven't got the new update (laughs) i'm still waiting (laughs) i'm in the queue ios 6.1 yeah dude it's been three years but you know 
once I get to iOS uh, 6.2, yep, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be worth it. It's worth the wait. <laughs> w e i g h t. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that's a that's a gym reference, huh? I don't know. I don't know much about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Door stoppers, mm-hmm. you call them? Uh, dorsal fins. I'm a marine <laughs> biologist. <laughs> Any, anyways, um, to get back on track, since we are uh, again always on a time crunch, good old, uh, <laughs> good old certain amount of space you have on the hosting software. Anyways, I I would like to just uh, to f- to conclude this episode. I just want a couple of concise places that somebody can start. Uh, besides or after education, mm-hmm. like what would be like the first action? Like what are you adding or, or are you subtracting from your diet? Like would you prefer to add a more nutritious food such as vegetables mm-hmm. or would you prefer to focus on subtracting the trash? So maybe cutting out soda. What do you think would be a good place to start if you had to choose one? If I had to choose one, well, that's a good question. Honestly, I would get started on doing less of the the highly processed or i guess less desirable foods and my reasoning for that is because i think that it's important to start building habits and habits of discipline but that's my that's my personality i mean you could very easily justify doing the other thing as well and eating i have more. a good ex- or uh, a good argument for uh, addition of yeah. of healthier foods. If you add veggies consistently to your diet and a good portion of it, not just like you know, like two pieces of broccoli or <laughs> something leaves. like people, yeah, two leaves. <laughs> like if you start deep fried properly, yeah, that too. Um, thoughtfully cooking and properly portioning portioning vegetables into your meals consistently, that will in turn not only provide you with better nutritional qualities that come from the vegetables, so the vitamins and the minerals that you will get from them, mm-hmm. but you that will be less space in your stomach for that other potentially less nutritious food that you might have wanted to eat. So maybe you had dessert in mind, but now you ate so much broccoli that you are, you're good on that. You're not going to go for that. So I just think that why uh, I asked you to pick one is that I believe it's important that when making uh, behavioral changes like this is that you take it in small, manageable steps. Mm-hmm. So that, that can go just like, you know, one change at a time. So, yeah, that, that's a really healthy path to take, especially if that's what your goal is or if your goal is to eat a healthier, more balanced diet. Which that should be something that everybody, everybody listening should pay some mind to. Whether or not you think it's important, newsflash, it is. Unless you want to die from some uh, probably preventable disease, then pay a little bit of attention to this and you will probably live a better life because of it. Yeah, I mean, other than that, like you'll, I guarantee you, that you'll feel better, you'll think clearer, you'll sleep better, you'll have happiness that you or energy even that you just didn't have before. You're not gonna smell better though, so you gotta keep showering. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. Well, can't have it all. But trade offs. Always. That's a that yeah, that's a really good argument for, for going that route. In all reality, I think it depends on your personality type. So it does take to know how you work because that's eventually what's going to help you decide what is sustainable. That's how you figure out what what you're going to do on a long term basis. So it's always in the short term. You have to test things out. I myself, I'm very challenge oriented, and so I I take. I, I look at something like cutting something out of my diet as a challenge. Like if anybody, if anything, I hear a voice in my head that says, I bet you can't do that. And just to spite that voice, I want to do it. And so that's me. But if you're somebody who's very goal oriented, you'll probably, you almost certainly be on a faster track to towards your goal of, of weight reduction, or at least a healthier diet in a more broad sense if you went the the route that you were opting for which is incorporating more vegetables 
going that route is a fantastic thing to do. It's very healthy. And I think it definitely appeals to those who are goal oriented. For me, I didn't have the long term sight to to uh, work for a goal that that felt like it was so far off. I needed something short term. And for me, what worked was just giving myself that challenge of I bet you can't do it and thinking, oh, just watch. So that leads me to the point that there within fitness and nutrition and making positive health changes in your life, there's really very little instant gratification. So working toward a long term goal like that is going to take a while before you you see the fruits of your labor. And that's something that you need to understand before you dive in. Because if you are thinking that one trip to the gym and one piece of chicken breast is going to put some hair on your chest, <laughs> then it, it might, yeah. but it, you might not get get any leaner or more muscular that day. Uh, so just know that, again, there are no hacks. There are no no easy ways to do this, but with dedication and effort you can make it enjoyable and thus over time it will become easy for you but just know that when you start out you're gonna have to work you're gonna have to earn it yeah i think that that even ties it back to the beginning of the episode when we said it that you have to acknowledge and you have to accept that it's going to be challenging that right there is the challenge and rolling with that you can also accept that the challenge diminishes in size. It might feel like a really big mountain to climb at first, but eventually it's something that you're just doing on the regular. Yeah, and then you can look down the side of that sheer cliff that you just climbed up, and you can look at where you came from, and then next look up to the next cliff, the next mountain to climb, because you should never be satisfied. Everybody out there listening You've got potential to do pretty much anything that you want with your life. So you might as well go for it. NSL. NSL. Never sleep alone. (laughs) Anyway. That's NSA. (laughs) Whatever. That's already taken. Well, anyway, thank you very much for joining us on this week's episode. We are just about out of time. John? Yep. I'd like to say thank you as well. Um, I hope that you found this episode useful to you and for anybody out there who's listening we plug it every single time please check us out ironwillcollective.com there you can find very pertinent information in our free ebook section so we have the nutrition ebook you are what you eat it's the first in a series of the three pillars of health free ebooks that we'll be releasing it's definitely something to piggyback with this episode And so uh, I'll try to put that in the show links and try and download it that way. But yeah, I think, uh, again, we've been talking about this for a while, but uh, nutrition is super, super important. You must respect it. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week. Yep. Good night.